from that city in the um, state of Colorado. And we're going to talk about just a couple of things directly related to her state. And uh, then we're going to talk about uh, with Betty Rowe, myself, and Kathy Young. Uh, you know, Betty Rowe, from Sway Consultant, uh, and she's into some other stuff as well, I tell you. But uh, we're going to talk about some things that relate to uh, women and relationships and the like. Uh, but we want everyone to know that, you know, women don't just talk about relationships, we actually talk about big deal stuff. We actually get involved in big deal stuff, right guys? I mean, we actually are the leaders, the movers, the shakers um, all over this county, all over the state, all over the nation, and um, we have an equal role to play uh, as far as the male population is as well. So we're going to talk about some stuff that kind of gets into much of that tonight. And uh, we just want you all to just kind of give a listen, give a listen to uh, the things that uh, we talk about. We do want to give a shout out and uh, express our sorrow in regards to the loss of uh, Dean Mon Montgomery uh, at uh, Bethune Cookman University. And he was an individual that was very well liked, very well respected, and um, he worked in the financial, he was the head of the financial um, activities at Bethune-Cookman University and um, we do want the uh, Bethune-Cookman family to know that uh, we are sorrow and have regret as do they in terms of his passing. Uh, it was really very unexpected and uh, they're all dealing with that sorrow as they go into their holiday season so please know that our hearts go out to you. Now uh, we want to go ahead at this time and uh, and really have uh, our individuals who are here just um, really share share with us. Um, I'm going to ask, uh, start off with Betty, I'm going to ask Betty to share uh, what she has said in terms of feng shui about women and women in leadership and, uh, and I know Betty that there are things, there are actual classes that you've had with women and for women to try to help them to uh, build up their self-esteem to help them to understand that uh, that they're great people. We're gonna say great, 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 awesome, awesome people. And you know what I hate better is when uh, because that we want the tide to rise in terms of how women see themselves. All of a sudden, when that happens, people think that all of a sudden you're putting men down, and that is not the case. We're saying that we're equal. We're saying that uh, that uh, there's a role for all of us to play in this society, men, women, girls, boys, and, uh, and we can get to where we need to be by coming together, working together, and uh, understanding and appreciating the value and the um, really what wonderful ingredients each brings to the table, right? Oh, Gwen, I just love you. <laughs> I can't say enough about you. Of course, and in the year 2012, that's one of the things that's going to start happening, Gwen, is that the energy moving in is for the women to begin to take over. So strong women may not really be in the situation. Strong women will move into leadership. And when women move into leadership, the wisdom will begin to come in, and peace will start prevailing because women really do not like to fight. They do not like war. So I'm very excited, and the concept is to own your own power. Power doesn't mean that you're not feminine. It means that you use the side of you that is available to be strong, to be assertive, to be who God made you, really. And you know, instead of bowing, uh, no, not, let me not use that word, <laughs> let me not use that word. In, in everything that I tell people that <clears throat> what I believe, I was talking to a man the other night and he was having some relationship situations and I said, well, if you look at your situation, the women that you get involved with are not wise. So here you are, this powerful man, and you get in with, with all these women that are not wise and what happens to your power? He said, I lose it. I said, exactly. So a real woman knows how to be contained within herself and content to be able to attain what God put her here for. And he put her here for, just like you, he put you here for political reasons. And now you're using that power to do what you need to do. Not, not by saying, I'm better than man, but saying it's time a woman takes the lead in the city. And you can use that leadership 
as a way to contain people and other women to come into your cabinet. For me, that's what a woman really is. She is the wise part of the relationship. And she is the one that restores order. And that's really what's going to happen, is order is, is the universal power is about ready to restore. Because we're moving into a different connection. I always say this, Gwen. I say when ego meets soul, we become enlightened. And a woman who doesn't live in her ego, but accepts that ego is edging God out, will move into her soul. And when you move into soul, you move into purpose. And then you do things with God's purpose. And I believe those are the women that are going to come in. They're going to be spiritually centered women who are doing God's purpose. And that doesn't mean that they can't be married, that they can't bear children, that they can't hold the positions of domestic things, because we love those things. But it means that we're going to step up to the plate and say, we're equal in this relationship. What is your part? And they're not going to be unhealthy in a relationship and think that they have to be someone they're not. You know, I always tell women, well, what do you do that? Why do you put on a show in front of that person? And they say, what do you mean? I said, well, I notice that you change when men get around. And she said, and they'll say that you do, and I'll say, yeah. If you want to live in God's world, you have to be authentic no matter where you are. And that's what I believe is going to happen. Absolutely. And it's yeah. going to happen. It's going to start really coming in. That's why I believe that you, well, let me just put it this way. I believe you'd be a great mayor. And the reason you'd be a great mayor is because it's time for women to lead in politics. And politics are all about power. But I believe you're God-centered. And that's why he put you into that position. And that's why I support you in your, in your campaign. Because I believe you, you know, you know your position, but you're not going to move from your spiritual belief. So if women live in their true spirit, they have power, they have wisdom, and they have love and balance. And all you have to do is get up every morning and ask the good Lord for it, and for direction, and He will move you into purpose. So I am, I'm, a, you know, a static me. You know, I'm always having <laughs> seminars with women. I teach women. That's my, I Absolutely. love women. And one of the things I always say to women is that we all have a purpose. Uh, everyone is born with a purpose. They, there was a book out called A Purpose Driven Life. But, Great book. Uh, even without that book, you need to know that we all have a purpose. Uh, amen, amen, amen. Now, Kathy, uh, Kathy Young, uh, again, she's a retired city clerk from the city of Colorado Springs, and that's in Colorado. <laughs> and uh, Kathy, how long were you the uh, city clerk there? Total of 17 years, but I have a total uh, overall history with the city is 28 years. 28 years, and that's like. Um, now, I was city clerk in Daytona Beach for 15 years. Kathy and I met at a city clerk conference um, many years ago, and, um, and we kind of hit it off very quickly and just became friends. In fact, um, she, when we first met, you had just started as a city clerk. I had been a city clerk for a few years, and I was kind of giving you a few hints here and there. And um, you were my mentor. I was her mentor, but she was a fabulous, just a <laughs> fabulous city clerk. What can I say? She, she really was, and, and really so many. Uh, a lot of the city clerks that I have mentored and that I have worked with over the years, um, some of them are retired, some of them are still hanging in there, but they were all great people. City clerks are great people, what can I say? That's, that's just the way I see it. But <laughs> in line with that, in line with that, Kathy, um, over the years then, uh, as with many city clerks, you've worked with uh, elections, you've worked with, uh, with the council, city council or city commission, um, and you, having lived in Colorado, had, you've had the opportunity actually of working with, too, uh, the Tabor uh, legislation in terms of, you know, the impact of that. Uh, and I really thought it would be robbery if, uh, while you're here, we didn't give you a chance to say something about the impact of TABOR. Um, tell them what it stands for and, and, and kind of what happened with that in Colorado. Well, uh, TABOR is the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. And it's a concept that was brought forward by uh, several advocates in Colorado back in 1991 
end in 1992. In 1991, the city of Colorado Springs encountered uh, on the ballot an initiative to change the charter to include the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. It's a concept that deals with um, limiting the growth of government and requiring government to ask the citizens about any kind of tax increases. And uh, the limiting portion of Tabor deals with uh, the amount of revenue that a, a city brings in or a town uh, would bring in. And uh, it's based off of inflation as well as your population growth. For the city of Colorado Springs, we were hit first in 1991 and being the only city in the state to have two types of Tabor to deal with. The first one, since it passed with the city of Colorado Springs, the advocates decided to take it statewide. And when they developed it for the state, there were some things that the city had in its Tabor laws that were not included in the uh, state initiative. So, uh, it has limited growth, and there are people who go on both sides that uh, think it's the greatest thing since peanut butter, and then there are some who think that uh, Tabor is not worth its weight in uh, the revenue and the limitation of growth that it was anticipated to do. For the city of Colorado Springs, because we had two different types of Tabor to deal with, there's been so much tweaking that's had to be accomplished in order for the city to be able to function as a city and still have revenue, um, but having the limitation of the growth. Um, taxpayers had the opportunity to be able to put um, their input on certain revenues that would go over a cap that was established through Tabor to say whether or not they want that uh, additional revenue that the, the city collected or the state has collected to go towards specific projects or to be refunded back to the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not worth, and I shouldn't say every penny that a person gets is worth something to them, but the amount of money, whether it was five dollars that would equate to the amount of revenue that each individual household or utilities uh, person would uh, be able to uh, acquire from that additional revenue, it may not be worth it for me to have five dollars when that five dollars could go towards building up our roads or to add something to the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So in many cases, as long as it was specifically geared towards a project, the taxpayers would say, spend that additional revenue on that project and not send it back to me. Mm -hmm. So the state uh, also has that uh, ability, and uh, we're finding that just like California, who have Prop 13, mm -hmm. that our revenues are uh, dwindling. And what many of the uh, persons that are, are opponents of Tabor are saying is that we will never reach the limits that we used to have in 2000, prior to 2008 again that we will always be below that, and it's going to take us many years, 10 to 20 years, to be able to get back to the growth level that we had in 2000, prior to 2008, when the economy started to turn down. Um, it's affecting uh, both the city of Colorado Springs in terms of our revenue, because uh, there's been uh, the lack of revenue, and when you have that that ratchet down and you have the ability to, to not spend the money on your infrastructure, it starts to hurt the, uh, the confines of your city. Mm -hmm. As a result of some of those things, the uh, parks went without trash cans and uh, we had people, uh, advocates that were within neighborhoods that were coming in and mowing lawns within our parks. Uh, bathrooms were closed off to the public because there was no money to pay people to come in to do those kinds of things. We lost over 500 employees out of the city government. Um, and these are not public safety. Public safety stayed whole, but the other employees uh, lost their uh, 
good job. They were laid off. Uh, some of it through 